I am Andrus Kulikowskis. This is Math for Wisdom with Franz Narada. And uh, he has been telling us about his life, his work as a pioneer of global villages. Today, he's bringing it all together in the big picture, a pattern language of global villages. What does that mean? Living locally is an idea for the whole world. Welcome, Franz. Thank you, Andreas, for having me again. Yeah, thank you very much for doing this uh, series and uh, and also triggering me to to look from the bird's eye view back on my life and uh, and uh, many many attempts uh, I, I I did and we have we have covered a, a lot of uh, things uh, um, from the nineteen seventies eighties nineties. Uh, to to the beginning of millennium uh, and 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 uh, and the the things that happened uh, up to two thousand seven two thousand ten when we did this uh, uh, workshop uh, together uh, about video bridging uh, and uh, and uh, I I looked at uh, some of my timelines um, it uh, it is. More or less, uh, it is the end of the spectacular projects uh, until uh, 2018. I started the Village University project, uh, which uh, which should be mentioned. Uh, the Village University was an attempt to uh, put this idea of communicating villages. Last time I, I, I talked about the fact that I saw Kirchbach just as a pillar uh, of a bridge uh, and the, the bridge really needed other pillars to become a complete bridge and uh, and so uh, I, I I focused uh, more and more on other places uh, uh, there was even uh, an attempt in 2008 I remember to to found the global telecenter alliance which very much uh, 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 made my enthusiasm grow uh, it was in Hungary, and uh, although it, it 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 turned out to be uh, not a success, uh, we 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 went on and we created events that connected villages. Uh, in uh, in two thousand eleven, after uh, after uh, I uh, I had the. Uh, this, this, uh, we had this workshop uh, in 2010 um, uh, that we did together, Grundwick workshop. We we started an initiative uh, called Village Innovation Talks, and uh, at that time uh, we connected places in Austria and Germany, um, and we we created the first multi-village dialogues, so to say. Um, and uh, this thread, it resurfaced uh, uh, in 2017 with the foundation of the uh, of the Dorf Uni uh, uh, Village University. So this is this is maybe the most important things uh, that uh, should be mentioned. There is other other uh, events that uh, that I, I I leave out because I would like to jump to the heart of the matter uh, and. Uh, it becomes a little bit theoretical right now. If if you good, I like that. Yeah. Uh, so so uh, at the at the focal point of my thinking is uh, the the village uh, and and the village uh, is not just a, a reality by itself, but is like an elementary form. I, I often use the comparison uh, that some simple and small things are. A mirror of the whole world, and I I, 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 use this example that Karl Marx had this idea to say that I start my book on the capitalist society with a simple thing uh, called the commodity, the good, the way, or the product. There are too many words in English, but in German the term Ware is very deep. It is something that you. Bivare, yeah, it means you keep for yourself until you get the money to sell it. You know, mm -hmm. so this is uh, Ware is the where is 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 uh, uh, 
an abstract truth uh, about this whole society. The whole wealth, uh, Marx, the first sentence of his book is, the whole wealth of the capitalist society is like an immense collection of, of, of commodities, wares. Uh, well, in English, we have the word goods. So goods. everything is goods, you know. <laughs> so it's, it's very basic. Like the, the thing yeah. that is good is goods, right? Like good, yeah. But this this idea of of, of uh, the good is is something ambiguous for Marx in, in German language. When you say Ware, it has this this etymological uh, um, uh, con uh, connection uh, to uh, to possession. You know, ich bewahre is. I, I, well, and that's and that's the connotation of goods. It's like it's a perversion of the word good. It means like, you know, it it, it just immediately changes the meaning of it. Absolutely, yeah. that's that's exactly what I mean. Uh, uh, this everyday experience, every good is a price, and you have no access to good. Right. Until that, that, that all those price. presumptions get into play, exactly. And for Marx, this constitutes an internal contradiction between usefulness on one side and exchange value on the other side. Mm -hmm. So this this thing, everything is produced for use, but it cannot be used until it is exchanged. And and uh, from this uh, from this simple contradiction, he emerges to 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 uh, to unveil the, the the basic structure that that shapes the whole world. This this uh, whole world as a dominance of value and its forms, money, capital, classes, and society organized by state, power, control, command, and so on. So he is under able to understand from this elementary form the whole genesis of a capitalist society with all its power, glory, misery. And I think the village is a similar approach that I took. The village is an elementary form. And to bring up two more examples of elementary forms that have come up in Math for Wisdom, uh, because we have uh, Daniel Friedman, a uh, biologist, and uh, he leads our knowledge engineering study group. He says in genetics, there's Drosophila, it's the fruit fly. So the whole theory of genetics stands on the fruit fly because it's very convenient. But he says what he wants um, for, let's say, collective intelligence uh, is to look at the ant colony. You see, he's passionate about ants. So the idea, like, if we could really understand the ant colony, there's so much to learn about the ant colony, we would just have a totally uh, different uh, appreciation of collective intelligence in all its forms or just consciousness or sociology, et cetera. So I think just to, but the village may be even more so, you know, as you're saying, this elementary form. It's, it's, it's an elementary form. Uh, and uh, and uh, I think it's very important to, uh, to understand that this, uh, this quotation of Marshall McLuhan that I use again and again, uh, uh, globalization pushed to its extremity will lead to uh, an unlimited renaissance of the local. So uh, uh, it's kind of an enlightened locality. Uh, you can bring many, many possibilities and potentials uh, of the world together in one place. So you can unfold a whole culture in a very small uh, microcosm. This is this is uh, this is the the idea. And, uh, that... as, as an independent thinker, and you were a star in my lab for independent thinkers, Menchu Soldas, Orchard of Thoughts. But you sent me on many odysseys uh, to visit different villages, you know, and I've ended up living in a village. And so the, there's a very deep connection that just became apparent: is that uh, uh, you know. A single independent thinker could get crushed by a village. You know, the village can be there. But three or four independent thinkers in a village can turn the whole village around. So yes. it shows like the, um, uh, as a focal point, you know, as like a nucleus of an atom or like, you know, where the energies are most clear and intense, like it's all happening on that scale. It's very easy for an independent thinker to go to a, a city or a megalopolis and just get lost and no one knows about them and no one bothers them. But on the other hand, they have no control. They mean nothing, you know, and the, and the whole megalopolis is kind of like a festival, a fantasy. It's like a temporary state of being that just is like cancerous, let's say, but the actual human life. Yes. Just to yeah. jump in. Yeah. Now, yeah, wonderful, wonderful. And that's basically the idea that uh, these local communities they are not the result of uh, blood and soil or tradition or uh, 
the fact that you are thrown into a destiny, but it is more the idea that in the long run, uh, this uh, free movement of individuals around the globe will lead to a new kind of clustering, uh, mm -hmm. a new kind of uh, uh, a balance-seeking process uh, uh, to to uh, to come together and shape common imaginations. So uh, the story does not end with the three, four independent thinkers changing the village because some people might not agree mm -hmm. uh, with the change. So they might have to walk away. So the, the, the idea, and this is an idea that really immediately comprises the whole world. The idea is that we have as much opportunities as possible for people to realize their freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, so this this is from 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 my uh, for, from my perspective, it's the only solution to the problem of freedom versus uh, equality or, or the Rousseau paradox. That uh, Rousseau says that uh, the general will uh, of a community uh, can force the individual to do things. They are in their best interest, but they may not know. And this is this is almost a fascist thought, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Rousseau is is in in a way also the, the father of uh, of of uh, of fascist, uh, well wanting, uh, uh, well uh, how should I say? We are we are just doing the best for you as as a, as a person, even if you don't know uh, that we are doing the best for you. This this mm -hmm. is. Well, I, I don't remember that part, but I remember reading the social contract and this idea of backwards thinking to say, like, if you grow up into a society and you never speak against it and you're always participating, thing, but well, basically you've bought into it. See, you've consciously bought into it. Like you need to leave, you need to resist, you need the dissent, you know, but otherwise you're you've written the social think, contract, you've accepted it and you've bought and into there it. Is a, and there is a passage in Rousseau where he says, uh, you have grown like a like a an apple on a tree, mm -hmm. but if you, uh, but if you really disagree with a tree, you have to seek for another tree. And so that's like open space technology, like you vote with your feet, you know. So you leave, you go to America or wherever. Uh, but one of the one dynamic I want to say that is related to that, that's very practically um, real, also is this idea of magnet families. So I just remember growing up in. Uh, uh, California, um, but certainly uh, it's pr important in the village, etc. This idea that you don't just have a nuclear family, but like a family when it has like five, six children, let's say, what happens? That family, if you have two families like that, they show up, you see, you have an event. <laughs> so, or it could be an extended family, but the idea is it could be a clan, but the idea is that a magnet family is the opposite of the free individual who can go wherever they want or, you know, the couple that can elope, let's say, or whatever. It's like, no, they're here and they're making the vibe. And so if you have two enlightened families, you'd say, or three or four, right, you can make for an enlightened village. You can make for events. You can make for a program. You make for activity, you see. Now, of course, you may have these wandering people. So there's this mix of dynamics. But uh, um, I, maybe to be very concrete, like when I grew up um, in these uh, utopic circles in uh, Orange County in uh, California, suburban California, there was uh, about 40 percent Mexican. There was a Mexican family uh, on the block. They had five children. When they went out on the block to play, that's when everything started. We play baseball or football or whatever you see. And then they would I mean, it was all really around that whole family, 30 children on the block, uh, on the circle. It was closed. So it was a very ideal place to grow up. Uh, Kind of like, uh, not in the way Christopher Alexander would like, let's say in his pattern language, but uh, I digress, but I just want to throw in that whole one more element. Uh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it, it, uh, uh, what you said about families constituting a village, uh, I, I saw this uh, in, in Damanhur in Italy, uh, or rather I, I heard it and, and, and witnessed it uh, from, from several people and from the internet, that they have this structure of uh, what they call the nuclei, the, 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 mm -hmm. the, uh, the, 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 like an extended family of 20 people. Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, this is really the, the, the center point of life. The, and the nuclei are uh, by themselves bearers of a culture. 
For example, there are these uh, arboricoli, uh, the, 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 the people that live in the tree houses, you know? Oh, oh, oh. And uh, they, have, they have a common passion for plants mm -hmm. and they do a lot of research. So for example, uh, they develop this uh, plant music uh, uh, uh -huh. technology. Uh, so uh, I, uh, I once had the opportunity to test it and uh, it's, it, it's really fantastic to have the idea to have the plants around us express themselves uh, with music. Uh, you know that uh, somebody uh, uh, there is there is this story of this of this guy who had this polygraph uh, uh, attached to a plant, uh, and, uh, and and then he intentionally uh, said, "I'm going to to burn this plant," and suddenly <laughs> the polygraph showed this sign of of so that the, the nature of around us the plants. They, they 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 might be truly sentient beings. Mm -hmm. We don't know how they how they uh, if they if they are just uh, triggered by our by our uh, pheromones that <laughs> or by by our by our, by by chemicals that leave the body or if, if it, is it is it brain waves? We don't know, but we see this effect that uh, that there is this invisible connection mm -hmm. between us and the world around us, and the the aboriculi have. They did not just only live in tree houses, but they said we want to really focus our life on the synthesis between the the, the plants and the and the human beings. So one of these aspects is that the plants do the music. <laughs> the other one, and, and and just in support of what you're saying, and maybe to emphasize this point too, like if we think of the family in different forms, but as one of these elementary elemental forms, you see, like just to say, like the social pressures that are coming together in a family that the family wields you know the family it's huge you know it's it's absolutely huge and so it can rip apart any kind of like theoretical good good intentions you know and it's really not understood in these visions of global villages you know what the role of the family is but there's this huge but when you tap into that and there can be new forms of family etc but when you have these huge energies, you also can have huge sensitivities. You can have like huge security, huge intimacy. And so that like interest or peculiar sensitivity to plants or stars or, you know, postage stamps or, you know, whatever it is, hobbits, you know, whatever, whatever it is. But uh, I think that that becomes possible. And maybe just to give an alternative, like we're living in a world where artificial, artificial intelligence is basically deciding who's going to marry who you see in a certain sense and so to have this alternate vision where like you have this world of villages that you could kind of circulate through and you can find a home you know or you can run in elope with somebody or whatever it is right like does it have to be artificial intelligence or could it be natural in some kind of sense you know that's exactly the point uh I think in this concept of the world, and and you're beautifully describing the uh, the science fiction novel that I want to write, uh, Gaia in Colors, the the and and also the book, uh, the World of Global Villages. There are two books. Uh, one is a novel uh, about this journey uh, from one village to the other, and this culture shocks, this constant <laughs> culture shocks that people go through, and eventually. Uh, they, they 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 find the place uh, that they like to be that they resonate with, uh, and 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 so this 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 whole idea, I think, uh, is is an idea of allowing diversity on this planet to grow to an extreme that we have never seen before. You know, and, and, there, and, to, and to understand like where does that diversity where is it needs to be rooted locally and where does it not? So an example would be chess. Like it used to be if you wanted to be a Bobby Fisher, you know, if you wanted to be like a world champion or, or top player, you had to go to New York City or Moscow or Yugoslavia. But now like there's these players all over the world because of the online chess.com uh, <laughs> world, you know, because of even online trends like the Queen's Gambit was a huge television show. And all these things have are affecting this global culture where you could be growing up anywhere. And so, and then you get these little colonies of like St. Louis is the chess capital of the US because there's a millionaire Sinkefeld who funds it, you see. So this, 
but there's this strange thing how it's sifting and sorting out like the global possibilities, but then the local kind of like uh, places where you want to end up, which I guess is accentuating even in chess. Yeah, I think there are thinkers that follow this idea, more or less, like Balaji Srinivasan, who, who wrote The Network State. And he, he says that, uh, and that's, that's very much compatible with the idea of global villages, that there is always similar <laughs> uh, vocations, if you call it that, uh, um, uh, in various places that are connected to each other. And, uh, and, and then you have this idea that uh, it is good to have maybe complementing places arranged locally, like in Epcot Center, you have these eight villages around the lake, and mm -hmm. you can tour it around the lake, and you have a you have a, a, a you have an experience of of a cultural diversity that 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 equals to a, to a, a trip around the world with an airplane. It is so authentic, uh, or at least I experienced it. You, know, you can travel from Canada, Morocco, <laughs> things like that, you know, France, you know, and there are even the plants, there are even the smells and everything, uh, the, the way people dress, uh, things like that. So the buildings, of course. So this 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 idea that uh, uh, once you you wrote, you want uh, you want. Uh, independent regions like Christopher Alexander, but you want uh, culture to be dominant in a region. Uh, and that, that is a very interesting idea to play with. How does that work together with the, with the desired complementarity of locations, uh, of villages close to each other, that give you, that give you a, a sense of almost rural urbanity you know this 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 you can have everything in, in in a close proximity that you need there is a healer's village there is a culture village there is a technological village things like that you know mm -hmm. so, uh, so this is this is this is an amazing world that uh, that opens our imagination to a, a redistribution of, of of the human element in on this planet so um this is by way of introduction, but but um, we're yeah. getting into the into the midst of it. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I wanted just to 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 add. Of course, uh, we have also talked about uh, uh, the fact that I don't want to 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 force everybody to live in villages. Mm. This, this is uh, there is this idea of the mother city of the uh, of the few remaining metropolises. Uh, that are uh, more important to this planet than the fatherland. You know, mm -hmm. they, they are the the hubs, the networks, uh, the providers of technology, ideas, production, and so on. So it's it's uh, uh, the idea that we are embedded in an optimum framework of cooperative relations around the world, but based on this idea that autonomy and independence of Every place uh, is important, like Christopher Alexander said. Uh, we need to we need to care for the ability of local communities to make their own decisions, and from the bottom up will arise a, a, a just world. And certainly, uh, and you spent many years in Vienna. It's a it's a city of great history, um, a wonderful uh, architecture, and just and cultural and 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 and. A, a center for many nations uh, where they came together. But um, uh, in, in even in these, so as maybe especially in these great cities, this idea of a neighborhood in the city where it really makes a quality of life different uh, when you have many distinct neighborhoods with their own characteristics Absolutely. as a homogeneous. Uh, I was blown away. I was visiting my friend Ika Kozak in, in, in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And he, he took me on a trip to uh, uh, the more or less uh, suburban uh, uh, neighborhoods. Uh, in, in It's not really suburbs, but it's, 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 it's really small cities uh, in uh, towns within the larger, larger uh, city of New York, the capital or whatever you call it of the world, you know. And, uh, and uh, he, he took me to a place with a uh, with, uh, Polish Jewish culture, mm -hmm. and I was blown away. You know, you have this authenticity in New York, uh, 
of all these immigrant communities, they form their own little world, and they, yet they are part of a bigger world. That was something that, that really, really impressed me. And I, I have to add personally that uh, what informed my life, uh, I, I'm Lithuanian uh, growing, growing up in America, raised in America. And so um, we didn't have a neighborhood like in Chicago where it's all segregated um, traditionally. But everyone would drive uh, 20 miles, 30 kilometers to the one parish. So, you know, in a in a me megalopolis of 14 million people, but there's one parish, uh, Catholic parish in Lithu you know, this Lithuanian, and you have a Saturday school and you go to the Saturday school and they have Boy Scout and Girl Scout camps, you know, and they have folk dance festivals. And it's like a village, basically. But no one lives in the village. Everyone drives half an hour to get there and drive. Uh, some, some do. Some, some they, they have a strong center probably in the parish. Uh, otherwise, it wouldn't work. Maybe, maybe I've exaggerated, but really not really. Like really in California, it's really much this kind of virtual, not virtual, but let's say automobile organized community, you know, that people yeah. drive together. And so my parents, all their friends were Lithuanian, but never no one lived next to each other. You see, it was very uh, curious. And so I end up program being Lithuanian. That's why I live here in Lithuania. But um, and then you would have different villages, um, so to speak, uh, different cities. They'd fly together. Typically, you would marry someone from a different village or a different, you know. Yeah. Anyways, I, I digress. But um, I, I saw that working uh, in uh, Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. uh, I had uh, a lot of uh, Persian friends. Uh, oh yes, mm -hmm. I had rented out my apartment in Vienna to two Iranian ladies uh, who were stuck in Vienna because of their marriage situation. Because they in 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 in, in Iran it was possible to marry by telephone. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, you couldn't travel to an Anglo-Saxon country without the marriage being consumed in reality. So oh. they were in this catch-22 situation and they had to stay party for years in Vienna. And so I, I, I had this access to this Iranian community later on. This was actually my, my entry point to the United States. Uh, so I was, uh, I was uh, visiting uh, my, my, my old friend, uh, from from Vienna and Los Angeles, and uh, so I was introduced to the way the Iranian community worked uh, in in Los Angeles, and it was exactly like you described. They came together for large picnics or things like that, you know. And and uh, and it was amazing uh, how many uh, how mm -hmm. many uh, Iranians they even called it Tehranjelis, you know. <laughs> So, uh, so they, they they were able to 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 really uh, maintain and 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 shape the culture. Had their own TV and everything, you know, a lot of shops and what you you wish for. You know? And and that was that was very impressive for me too. So uh, it was uh, it was this fact that you can intentionally create places of culture and uh, and, uh, and you and, can be very well organized if you want. Yes. 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 So, uh, but but then again, it's very important that uh, uh, you don't get stuck in a culture. You can change culture. We mm -hmm. we become world citizens. Uh, you can choose. You have to choose. I think uh, it is important that to say if you don't choose, uh, you stay lonely. <laughs> that's 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 simply mm -hmm. the point. If you if you if you don't. So to say, buy into a culture like you did. You you uh, you decided intentionally to to mm -hmm. uh, to uh, really embrace your heritage and 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 uh, uh, become a part of of Lithuania. Okay, and so, so that... I think maybe um, maybe to kind of bring it in, but this idea. Um, is there a lingua franca? Is there a shared culture in the whole world? Like, so to say, like the global village culture is something that is being offered as a global world culture, you know, that everyone could understand these types of things, you know, because we have nationalists, we have fundamentals, you know, in different religions, whatever, to say, okay, be whichever you want, you know, like, but why can't we like why can't we have two Israels an Israel that's you know where Palestinians and Israels are equal and then maybe a tiny Judea for the fundamentalist Jews let's say right like 
that seems to be the logical solution if you really ask what people want. Most Israelis want to live with Palestinians, but not all of them do. So, and that it, is but if there was this gen general feeling like, yeah, we live in a world of global village, right? And I think the reason I'm saying this is that uh, Kirby Erner, um, he gave the Epcot model that you described, you know, he said, oh, wondrous wisdom, which is my language of wisdom, you know, that can be the castle in Disneyland. But, you know, I want to have an Epcot pavilion for Buckminster Fuller. <laughs> and I, went to, I was wondering, well, I don't, I kind of like saying, you belong outside of the parking lot on the other side of the street, you know, what are you, you know, because just because um, um, I get, and I thought like, what's going on? But I, what I want to say really is that wondrous wisdom as a metaphysical language, I'm trying to say, could it be a lingua franca? You know, could there be one shared reality, like one absolute truth? And then you could do whatever you want that's interesting. But when we have to go back and touch, you know, like what's actually real, you know, well, yeah. we have a language, just like there's one mathematics, you know, you can okay. do it in all okay. branches. But Let me jump in. I have lots of mathematics. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I I was also very touched by a book by a Swiss guy mm -hmm. uh, who published uh, with a, a pseudonym uh, with a, just initials. Uh, who, his name was not known for a long time. He was uh, it was p p dot m dot, uh, uh, and his book was called Bolo Bolo. Oh, you've said yes. Uh, very good. Yeah. And Bolo Bolo is based on the concept of a very simple lingua franca. And that's called Asa Pili. That is, uh, you have this, this two syllable words, uh, like a uh, Hawaiian, or, well, I, I, it is it's something very, very similar, uh, simple, like Bolo, uh, Nima, Taku, things like that, you know. There are about a few dozen words, uh, and you can make a conversation about the whole world in this, yeah. Um, so Azapili has these words that are basic concepts for a for a world of global villages. And now that he has come out uh, uh, with his name, uh, his name is Hans Wittmer. I think he has he has kind of omitted that thought, and he became very uh, pragmatic uh, with his new concept called global modules. Mm -hmm. I don't like that much because I liked more this fantastic anarchist beginning world of, of Bolo Bolo. So Bolo Bolo is, is a, a plural. Bolo Bolo means the Bolos. It's just in, if you repeat it, it's it's a plural. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and uh, so a Bolo is like a local community of uh, let's say three to five hundred people that uh, that that are enough to to shape a basic uh, uh, should I say living environment based uh, on a common living place yeah uh, and a common culture that is his schematic he thinks in a way very schematic like like uh, mm -hmm. like it's, you know, the, the global module concept is also very modular. So he has this basic form of, of, of house, the bolo as a, as a, but, but in a way, he also has this amazing idea of the cultural diversity as, as you just described with the two types of Israel. <laughs> okay, there could be mm -hmm. 10 types, there could be 100 types of Israel in this, in this, in this, right. uh, in this imagination. He describes it. With the with the word nima, I think the the word nima is the is the second most important word in the whole book. Nima is the is the is the common culture that keeps people together. Uh, and the way he describes it, uh, uh, I would really recommend everybody to read the 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 the, the, the paragraphs on nima, because on on one side he describes he describes the diversity of possible forms of culture. Of bolos that uh, that emerge uh, uh, from from various nimas, uh, but also then he describes how important the nima, the culture, is for every aspect of life. Mm -hmm. The way you eat, the way you dress, and things like that. The way the, the, the way that uh, makes you uh, that makes you a, a living compatible uh, uh, community. And so uh, we we talked about this this uh, isolation. Uh, in the in the large cities, uh, and and sometimes I use the joke: the only thing that you allowed to shape really in the urban environment is your own body, 
so you can put tattoos all over you. That is, or, or you can dress in a way that is, but but shaping reality together. Mm -hmm. It requires it requires this type of neighborhood, uh, as you said, or village, or bolo, as 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 he says. And and this is this is the most uh, important cultural achievement that humans can make to shape their own environment accordingly to a vision, to a common narrative, to a story. And I I think uh, you're just sparking this uh, recognition, or that. Uh... That is the level where we need ideology. Like we need a global ideology that uh, respects culture as a as a value of itself. You know, like in a and it can be conservative culture where it's saying like we do things we don't know why, but we do them because we've always done them. Or it could be like we innovate because we have this urge to innovate, and so we've done this new things. But to say that cultural diversity, but and cultural, let's say okay, maintaining a culture, there's something valuable about that that needs to be treasured uh and protected and kind of like uh and kind of like honored uh and respected in some ideological way across the world and the problem i guess is twofold is that the the most powerful entities uh like the us or china or russia are very homogeneous in a certain sense like they're very much uh i only need to know one language you know i only need to so they're not multilingual. They're not. Um, they're not um, multicultural, in in the kind of um, in in the, in in, the, in they're homogeneous in some sense. Whereas many cultures in the world, they are kind of like a single culture, or people end up living in a single culture, so they don't see the whole dilemma. They just see that their culture is being swept aside and et cetera, but they don't see the solution, I guess to say. You don't see the solution. And, yeah. and I, have, I have to jump in here and, and, and express my anger about the development of the political left, mm -hmm. which became so totalitarian. Right. Uh, it's, it's, it's as if everything has turned upside down, you know? Uh, yeah, and so this idea that we need this kind of homogeneous culture that is tolerant, so to speak, in a particular way of in particular into certain, you know, there's something just missing the boat in terms of like the cultural diversity, you know, that, uh, absolutely. And culture, you know, and so cultures are not based on fairness, so to speak, but cultures are based on some kind of notion of, I don't know. So wondrous wisdom is a metaphysical language. That's not the level where you need an ideology, you know. That's a level where you need to sort what's true. <laughs> but so the independent thinker is free in that sense. You know, they need to be respected. That's not the level of ideology. The level of ideology is like you're saying these nuclear forces of the family and the village and wherever. Like, how do you keep things from being? Um, uh, well, how do you allow those forces to be what they are and not kind of just completely bulldoze them over or something with? Uh, okay. I have to make a big jump. Because okay, so we we jump right now to where yes we jump to the to the year of 1995, um, and uh, this was my last visit to the United States, um, and uh, it was a very strange sequence of events that happened uh, uh, for the whole two months. It was like I was guided, and. Everybody I talked to in the airplane and everything guided me towards a kind of sort of uh, spiritual <laughs> uh, experience. Uh, it 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 uh, it was very strange. Uh, and the, and 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 the highlight, the absolute highlight of 1995, was when I talked to Willis Harmon about uh, about uh, my. Uh, I think it was. It was about computer uh, uh, mediated uh, or, or about uh, technology uh, mediated uh, facilitation or things, things like that. And he said, why don't you come to the to the meeting that we are just uh, that we have just setting up and just planning? It's uh, it's uh, in, in Boulder Creek in the in the in the in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Uh, uh, it's it's uh, it's a it's a beautiful place. It's the Sequoia Lodge of the Foundation for 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 Peace or something like that. Uh, and 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 we rented that for the for the annual meeting of the World Business Academy. 
and uh, uh, said, "What do I have to do with a with a business world?" You know, it was a little bit strange. But he explained to me, you know, uh, that was uh, an endeavor he started with uh, Edgar Mitchell and other people, the astronaut. Uh, he said, uh, "We have to we have to take into account that business is the most uh, uh, powerful uh, institution on this planet, and." With power comes responsibility. So maybe this was an alternative design uh, uh, against the World Economic Forum. <laughs> you know, I don't know uh, what they thought. You know, but it 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 was this thought that we uh, we bring together business people to uh, to really do something in the best interest of the whole world and uh, and to respect uh, that there is something beyond something bigger than business no? mm -hmm. anyway i i um yeah just to um, just to just to seize on that and to say yes like what is keeping us from this uh, global village ideology this world of uh, cultures that you can move across and you know root yourself in is um well, globalization in terms of business, you know, I mean, or just business, which right. is driving globalization. And, yeah, and so, so if we need to solve that economic um, connection, that's a crucial. Absolutely. absolutely. That's crucial. And that's, that's absolutely unresolved. Um, so but but let's let's just uh, uh, follow my, my 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 path there. I, I uh, there was it was like a three or four day meeting and uh, there was, he said, uh, before we go to the regular facilitation, we have a morning session with a local group of uh, of uh, so-called so uh, uh, semi-natives, uh, uh, the, the, the American Indian uh, culture keepers. Mm -hmm. And uh, this particular group, uh, uh, had a, a Cheyenne uh, name, it was called Ehama. And uh, there, there were two teachers in the center that was uh, a man and a woman, uh, uh, or a woman and a man, <laughs> Wind Eagle and Rainbow Hawk. And uh, they had uh, some assistance. And uh, so when I arrived uh, on time, uh, the first thing uh, that happened is that we were uh, Led through nature to to uh, to uh, uh, an opening in the forest, uh, a beautiful uh, sequoia forest, uh, where they have built uh, like uh, a circle of of of, of tents or uh, gathering places in beautiful colors. Uh, uh, so uh, and later I learned that the colors had a lot of significance, and there were eight directions. And they they they, uh, they asked us to to choose intuitively which direction uh, we were attracted to, and uh, so um, I saw this uh, uh, this uh, lilac color, like uh, more a little bit more uh, blue than red, uh, the, the, and I felt attracted. And I said, "Okay, here is the northwest. That's the." That's the position of strategy, you know, and and so, and so we sat there, and uh, and they uh, uh, they gave us a talk about uh, uh, like a corn planting talk about uh, the gift uh, that was bestowed on mankind uh, in 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 the beginning of. Uh, seeing things through eight lenses or eight perspectives mm -hmm. um and uh, and uh, wise communities would organize accordingly and would uh, form uh, uh, the decision making process like a wheel of eight perspectives and uh, actually <laughs> in the first moment uh, i didn't really understand what was going on i even left I, I drove away. I said, "What, what, what kind of theater? They all had costumes and things like that, you know." I said, "What, what has, what does it have uh, for me? Uh, is there any relevance for me?" But then something in me said, "No, you have to return." And it was as if almost no time had had passed, you know. And I, I sat in this circle, and I, 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 I even 
was the speaker for the Northwest at the very end without <laughs> exactly what I what I was uh, knowing exactly what I was saying, but but it was something in me said that's that's something that you have deeply to observe, and actually what happened was the whole crowd was so much enthusiastic by uh, by this uh, by this whole setting. They said we want this we want these native people as our facilitators for the whole meeting. Mm. And uh, uh, and although the leadership was a little bit angry, <laughs> uh, they 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 they, uh, mm -hmm. they gave it to the to the to the common wish. And uh, so uh, Windy Glen Rainbowhawk they they led the whole meeting with a question basket with an ongoing uh, a kind of sort of uh, council uh, type uh, uh, of answering any ongoing question from eight perspectives. And what I later found out, that is a balance-seeking process, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, if you look at the, the, the directions are grouped by the, by the, uh, how should I say, north, south, west, east, east west, uh, and, uh, and in between northwest, southeast, and, uh, and uh, north, uh, east and southwest. So that this this is like eight directions, and there is a very strict logic in this. Mm -hmm. and yet there are always basic polarities. To to start with, there is the 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 basic polarity between individual creativity. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, the 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 east, the the, the starting point having a new powerful idea and on the other side the knowledge in the west uh, that uh, there is a there is a kind of intrinsic uh, um, uh, tension or there is a tension between the south which is the which is the position of the of the emotion and the north which is the position of the clarity and and even the 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 ex uh, the the uh, northwest and the southeast, they have this uh, polarity. Like the southeast is the appreciation of the present, whereas the northwest is the look into the future, the consequences of everything, the strategy, the the sharma. Yes. Say that again. I'm sorry. So the southeast is the appre appreciation of the present, whereas the the, the northwest is the is the uh, is the is the position that I Im immediately took. Yeah, <laughs> is this is unmanifested possibilities? Is the is the look into the future? So uh, what 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 can or will happen? Uh, what are the 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 the, 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 the outcomes? Uh, uh, like like uh, Paul Adridis in tune uh, is also <laughs> always. Uh, plagued by the future outcomes of his deeds you know? uh, so so uh, but let me let me take could, a, could you just to finish it so the southwest and the northeast would be what the southwest uh, would be the rootedness in tradition and rituals whereas the northeast would be the spontaneous adaption to to present circumstances, the the the, the shape shifting, if you wish. So let me walk you through the whole process very mm -hmm. shortly, because it is wonderful. Because it's like a universal logic of decision making. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, the chiefs of the of the east, everything begins in the east, and it was very interesting that I even have a speech by Arnold Kaiserling. Who, who who had a school of of the wheel in Vienna, <laughs> and uh, they they were working on based on, based on astrology, but uh, they they also had this uh, they had this idea that everything starts. Is this, is this called the medicine wheel or not? Uh... It is called the medicine wheel. It is not the stones uh, and the positions, but it is rather the, the the medicine wheel as a council. But we. We used it as almost as synonymous, uh, uh, the medicine wheel as the as the gathering of the eight perspectives. That is that is the, this is a hammer type of medicine wheel, if you wish. Mm -hmm. So, so that that it starts with the creative idea, 
somebody comes and say, we have to do this. Mm -hmm. And tries to convince the tribe or the people with a vision. Mm -hmm. So when the vision is laid out in front of the people, he, he's like everyone has to finish. I have spoken, you know, and then it's silent, you know, uh, and, and there is only one person allowed to talk at one time, the person who holds the talking stick, a very important element of the whole thing. So the talking stick is now handed over to the to the uh, chiefs of the southeast, and the southeast chiefs they are the ones who appreciate, as I said, the present condition, and uh, they try to uh, they try to prepare uh, a wise decision by we must not lose our qualities. Uh, this is what we are. This is uh, this this is the opportunities that we have already. We might not need this new idea. <laughs> we sit already on a fixed ground, you know, like the Taurus <laughs> in the in the horoscope. Yeah, and then it's 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 very important to 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 draw the lines between the astrology and the will. It, it, it's amazing what you discover. And then you 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 hand over the talking stick to the chiefs of the south. And the south is is uh, as I said is is governed by emotions. Uh, so uh, they also are the war chiefs, as uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, so this 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 kind of conflict, you know, <laughs> they express the conflicting uh, sides. It's called power. On one side, danger. On the other side, you know, this uh, this uh, ambiguity, like uh, the the twin in in the <laughs> astrology. Um, uh, so uh, the 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 expression is like SWOT analysis. Yeah, we 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 will gain new strength, but we have a lot of weaknesses. Uh, we have to we have a lot of risks. That, that 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 come out of this and the result is heat and confusion the result is scission you know uh, the, the, the 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 society almost breaks apart you know mm -hmm. <laughs> so and that's a fine that's fine because that's part of the process and so the talking stick is now handed over to the chiefs of the southwest in the southwest, we are also the medicine singer chiefs. They use the power of memory to make us understand that after all, we are one people with a common history, with a common identity. And in this rootedness in our rituals and traditions, we find some comfort for the moment that keeps us able to go on even if we are internally torn apart by this uh, contradiction of possibilities and dangers and, 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 and risks. So out of that calm point, we are able now to handle the talking stick to the chiefs of the West. And the chiefs of the West, they are the keepers of knowledge. They are without this conflicting interest out of a position of sheer uh, wish to understand. They are unveiling to us the forces of reality. So all the forces of reality that can be used according to our wishes but if we understand them like we have to we have to understand nature deeply like francis bacon said it's only subdued by submission we have to understand how uh, things work then we can make a wise decision so they enlighten us about all the aspects of that particular question and then they hand over the talking stick 
to the chiefs of the Northwest. And the chiefs of the Northwest, of course, <laughs> here I am. <laughs> you know, they are, they are, right now, they are uh, talking about timing and interrelatedness of all things. So if you use the right moment, the right connections, you can do it in a wise way. It's practically... How to implement it. Mm -hmm. How to implement it. It's practically the strategy. Where, where, when the South East was the shaman, uh, the, the, the Northwest is the strategist, as I said. So when the strategist has spoken, then it's time to make a wise decision. <laughs> And it, the, 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 the talking stick is handed over to the chiefs of the north. I think it's the peace chiefs. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, hunter and gatherer chiefs. I'm, I'm not so sure. Um, and in the clarity of the reflection of all the possibilities a decision is made. It is simple as that. Their power is to make a decision. Yeah, but this is not the last position in the wheels. <laughs> and the, the brilliant wisdom of the, of the medicine wheel comes with the eighth position. Um, and these are the law dog chiefs. So when the talking stick is handed over to the chiefs of the North East. They examine carefully if anybody's deepest interests, wishes, needs are violated by the decision. The law dogs, they are very sensitive. They even they even think again ahead to the unborn children. Is there anybody who is affected by this decision in a way that cannot be tolerated or that is that is uh, hurting one position too deep? And what happens in <laughs> in in the medicine wheel very often is that they say, okay, we hand the talking stick over to the creative East people again, but this time they have to modify their idea. Mm. And that is it, you know, this process of, of, of governance, uh, I, I was appalled, you know, I thought we as the Westerners, mm. we have invented democracy. On that evening, when I under, finally understood or began to understand what the medicine wheel or the council about, was about, I suddenly realized we had not the slightest idea about decision making. And uh, and uh, it was already years ago. I also had left this uh, this uh, cosmos of of um, how should I say the, the idea of of organized. Uh, Marxist politics. I had left it. I was thrown out, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, no wonder. No wonder. I, I finally found the Holy Grail, you know. No wonder I have I have emotionally reacted against this uh, well-meaning dictatorship <laughs> idea uh, that the knowledge decides everything and, uh, and um, so we can shape the world out of the of the position of the West and things like that, you know. Uh, um, so I found mm -hmm. out that we are really we are really barbarians. We don't know how to shape a collective decision, and uh, and and that was that was becoming a light motif, a, 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 a guiding star of 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 my life, uh, even if it was one failure after the other to implement this i have to say it it was uh it was oh, in terms of practice because in vienna rainbow hawk was in vienna is that right uh... yes i even i brought them to vienna you know mm -hmm. and and what i experienced uh was uh 
that even my beloved teachers, I could not go along with them in terms of their practical uh, way of distributing their idea because they were asking people to pay a lot of money to go to seminars. Oh, I see. It was their income. And that conflicted with their mission. But totally, totally. So, so um, I can just say, and, you know, anyone who's studied wondrous wisdom will know, like, you know, these eight divisions of everything form a cycle. And so that's basically the, you know, it's it's a metaphysical grounding. And so immediately becomes interesting. Well, you know, how does that connect? And you've explained this to me maybe 15 years ago. And I think I've gone to maybe that community, what was left of it, uh, perhaps. Uh, but um, um, I don't see the connection right now. But what I can say is that what's attractive to what you, you described is this dialectic. You know, first of all, that it's clear that it's like a thoughtful way of uh, developing an idea, clarifying it on many different layers. And furthermore, that it um, has this uh, um, collective decision making um, aspect to it, where exactly the types of things that would be needed for a healthy decision in a group environment, you know, where people have different minds or different interests or different concerns, right, or different vulnerabilities, that this dialectic can maybe sort all that out in a healing way. And so that is extremely uh, positive, attractive. Um, I, However, uh, a few months ago, I think I looked in Wikipedia for the medicine wheel, I think, and it says medicine, there's one thing, medicine wheel for the astronomical um, monuments, but there's another for the symbol. I think there's like a flag and stuff. And so the article happens to be written quite critically, you know, that this is not related to indigenous people. This is kind of like made up and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I just wanted to bring that up and ask you what, and, and also, like you say, that it runs into these conflicts <laughs> and, you know, real life versus theory can sometimes conflict in very important ways. So, uh, <laughs> after you, so after you gave this beautiful uh, exposition, you know, now to maybe uh, move, you know, into the, which which one of these is the critical view? <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, oh, the Southeast, well, or the, you introduced well, an idea, now we'll look at the Southeast corner. <laughs> like, do we really need this or do is it? Um. Well, to add this criticism, you know, when I was at the School of the Wheel, mm -hmm. um, first of all, I was, first I was totally impressed by, because Arnold Kaiserling was a person that mm -hmm. truly, truly drew from all the cultural sources of the world, you know, mm -hmm. he had connections, uh, Africa, India, mm -hmm. you know, South America, you, you you name it, you know, he was he was like a like a, 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 a meeting point of all the global cultures, and he brought them together in the wheel. Mm -hmm. So that is that is for me very credible. But at the same time, I have to admit, he confused the most simple things. He confused the north and the south, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so. Uh, South for him is uh, like a sweet Christmas uh, innocence, uh, uh, and 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 North is is like more uh, like uh, how should I say uh, uh, a different kind of of uh, assertive uh, energy, you know. So um, uh, and and there is no there, there there is this logic is completely missing. Although they have deep insights, you know. So, so um, I'm sorry. So, what was the problem with his way of looking at it? I, I, it was it was uh, practically impossible to apply this concept to a group decision making process, you know, because it is it is just a, a series of, of 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 emotions seemingly unrelated. Well, maybe maybe one thought on it is that it is a bit like theater. You see, like like you saw it as a theater, right? Like in order for this to work, you would have to have people who are trained all their lives to 
think and participate in one way and they will only talk when they have the talking stick and they will stick to their role you know like a normal human being would have all eight minds let's say right i mean right like all eight mental yeah. states this is not I, normal um for a normal person to have this theatrical role where you're going to be the warrior let's say right and that's how you're going to approach things and etc cetera, etc cetera. it just doesn't seem um well we don't have people like that but i was i was really mad at uh Wind Eagle rainbow hawks that they didn't put this into the open source world you know uh, yeah I, I i i said okay uh we have to try because this is such a wonderful methodology and and I, currently i'm trying to to uh, we have now sociocratic uh, centers in, in in europe uh so where they, they train this consensus oriented decision making and i try to convince them about uh, the medicine wheel and uh, what comes to my mind uh, is an experience that i had in 2016 uh uh, we were traveling with the Univision, uh, which is another project I did not mention yet. Uh, this project of the of the wandering university around the world uh, by Johannes mm -hmm. Priester. We were traveling to Greece, and uh, and we were invited to the friends of uh, Arcadia. Mm -hmm. They have an office. Just uh, you see out of the window, you see the Acropolis above you, and see no, I, here I am. The friends of Arcadia in Athens, the birthplace of democracy. Andreas, I have never ever experienced such a cacophony <laughs> of opposing views without solutions like at the friends of Arcadia in Greece. It was horrible. And I said, I wish they knew about the medicine wheel. <clears throat> oh, I see. So this is this this reinforced my feeling. It is maybe necessary to learn that it's a skill, like we learn mathematics. Yeah. It is a skill of decision making. There is something, and that, that's my work as a sociologist. Well, I think, uh, and this is relevant for our math wisdom community. Like, you can't do these things theoretically. You need to have real activity. You see, you need to have a real community. Like, you have to have a real setting in order to do this. If you don't have, if it's not embedded in a real community where people have real identities and real, uh, you know, relationships, right? And if there's no real activity that we're actually trying to do, right? There's nothing real about it. It's just not going to uh, be in informative. I would wish that we introduce this to real communities. That was that was what I said to, what I said to uh, Wind Eagle and Rainbow Hawk, our uh, our local villages they don't have the means to send uh, to send constantly people to your seminars, but uh, if you send the community guides there, uh, and and you teach people about making wise decisions, why don't you try it out at least? Why don't you try it out? Well, and and also um, you see, unfortunately, like uh, obviously, like you you saw the and you know it is beautiful and you saw the. You felt the benefit, maybe is the way to say it, but like you just also saw the dysfunction of it. And um, and then when you have these traveling teachers, you see, it's not like like if they, if they had a community and then people came to their community and they were able to explain, look, we'll let you watch this process and you'll see. You see, that'd be very convincing, you know, or at least it'd be very real. But when you have them traveling, giving seminars, etc., and this is not well, clear, like, did anyone benefit? Uh, I have to say... That's completely, you know, that's just completely not uh, convincing. I, I have to say that uh, uh, they have built a village in New Mexico, the village of the Shining Stones, uh, with mm -hmm. all that money. And so they, they try to spend it in this direction, but uh, I don't get any report uh, how the community grows there. You know, it's like, it's like Arcosanti, you know, it's, 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 uh, in a way, it's 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 not alive, you know. Uh, no, at least not from my outside perception. Maybe they, it is, but as a as a as a role model for the whole world, uh, also this community did not achieve what uh, its own potential. Uh, well, and uh, just to uh, just to kind of like be real, um, and um, uh, well, you were in Minchu Sodas. This was an online community, you know, very tentative in a certain way. But I think it was very functional. I think it was very strong culturally. Like, I think, you know, 
there was something real about like there's something working about it there was something successful about it i think i don't know if that's you know in the end it failed like in terms of financially like people didn't realize like oh we should i think maybe they didn't appreciate it enough but i think i'm just double checking with you like that was a that was a success i think culturally what do you think it was huh. Yes and no. Uh, in in a way, it was you. You know, you mm -hmm. as a central person, uh, very real. Uh, you always say that the the real things are people. Yeah. Right. Um, and uh, it was your effort to support uh, independent thinkers uh, and to uh, and to ask for a way. For, to realize the impossible, to make uh, to make a, a living out of supporting independent thinkers. I mean, you really try it, but but uh, but it is a real difficult endeavor. Uh, and, well, and we well, that, have... well, that part failed. I mean, I was able to. I mean, I'm, Jerry is impressed as a business person that I was able to do that for twelve years. You know, and they, they'll then go bankrupt. That's another. So you know, but I think. Uh, I mean, certainly we had accomplishments like with regard to Africa, you know, the types of things we did. Um, I don't know. Like I, I felt, I mean, I think part of it was I was a kind of person who was inclusive, who really was supportive, you know, and who was trying to say if people do certain things, like if they work publicly, if they do things, I will be supportive. I will make an effort for them. I really tried on my part to, you know, and if you're a poor person, we're going to make sure that you benefit from this. You know, you will get $100 in advance, let's say, right, if you're in Africa. We're not going to string you along. You know, you will be in the position of power. We had very good morals in that sense. Um, I think, uh, you know, certainly the pyramid of peace, you know, the success we had in Kenya was just, uh, you know, over the top, but um, just fantastic. But uh, but I think overall people felt good in that. Uh, certain people felt very good in that. I don't know. Like I think it was a, it was a nourishing community. Maybe, uh, but that's how I feel. But but so that's why I'm asking. Um, well, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't have taken part if I didn't feel good in it. You okay. Know? Right. Maybe that's okay. So just to well, you took part in this wall medicine wheel. I don't know where. Like, that's not really an answer. Like people pay, take part in all kinds of dysfunctional things. But um, maybe. Uh, so I was just trying to. Uh, I try. I try to. I, I try to do a different answer. You know. Yeah. Um, you have been part of the way, and I associate now you mentally with uh, my friend Fritjof Bergman. Mm -hmm. uh, Fritjof Bergman, who has reimagined uh, the whole work movement as a new work. Oh, movement. right. The new work movement. Right. The new work movement, and uh, and I think uh, it was necessary to be very radically uh, uh, focusing on this dimension of what is your deepest value and uh, that's what you said and what do you really, really want? That's what Richard Bergman said. And that's basically the same, yeah? Right. So, so uh, and, that- And that, that, that should be the basis for economy and work and life choices regarding career and job, et cetera, yes. Exactly, exactly. So. Altogether, Minche Sodas uh, was like uh, li like one of the manifestations of mm -hmm. this zeitgeist. Uh, 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 and if you have this spiral dynamics, it was at a very high level. And it was so high that currently we are plunging down on a very primitive level uh, as a society. I hope we will recover. But it was this, this, this idea that only through the unfolding of the individual desires, wishes, very much reflected, but nevertheless, out of pure freedom uh, and the highest uh, uh, communication with yourself, can a good society emerge? Yeah, and that is that is for sure one of the of the of the of the achievements of Minchusodas to have rooted this thought in people. And so, um. In the beginning, in preparing for this, uh, you, you mentioned that um, Dorf Wiki and that you had prepared a whole set of uh, things to cover. I don't know if we covered any of them or we've been covering them not in order, but... Uh, okay. No, we have not covered uh, uh, Dorf Wiki. Is, is that for another time, maybe, that we run through this? Because we... Maybe that's that's an addendum, yeah. 
-hmm. but, uh, but I would love to, uh, Mirbo, if I'm mirroring, you know, I would like to explain this one. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, very good. Because it is, uh, it is something, today is the 15th of March, and uh, it's only five, six days away from this magical date uh, that is very much connected to the idea of the East, by the way, uh, the, the spring equinox. And uh, I would like uh, to, to close this session from my uh, point of view with the memory of uh, a person. I'm just uh, working a radio program uh, to create a radio program on John McConnell, the founder of Earth Day. Because uh, John McConnell was one of the people that deeply impressed me simply with his mission uh, to say we are living on one planet and we have to live accordingly as trustees of the earth uh, and, and understand that with all our cultural differences, we have to find a way to coexist as, uh, as mankind and to, uh, and to nurture our common base of life. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is a, a beautiful personal story. In 1993, um, um, uh, the, another friend of mine, uh, Hans Janicek, who was the president of Socialist International at, uh, 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 at some time, but also president of, of uh, Earth Society Foundation, whatever, you know, he was in New York. He was one of the, of the, of the hidden, so to say, uh, uh, protégés of, of Bruno Kreisky, of our uh, of a legendary chancellor uh, who, who did uh, amazing uh, things in terms of uh, geopolitics. He said, if we, if, we, if, we, if we are not a superpower, we have to be, as Austria, as a neutral state, a diplomatic superpower, you know? And so he mediated between, uh, between the Palestinians and Israelis, and he mm -hmm. did a lot of things that were really not, uh, how should I say, uh, regarded as, as 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 possible by the whole world, and so he said. Instead of investing in the army, we we're building the Austria Center, a conference center. Mm. Uh, and uh, in uh, in uh, this uh, conference center, uh, there is uh, these five stones, and Hans Janicek always wanted to complete the, the stone from each continent, and they're connected through. Uh, uh, lines of they should have been connected to laser beams, you know, mm -hmm. as a symbol of the of the uh, connectedness of the world as the base of a new of a new culture. But now they have removed the stones from mm -hmm. the Austria. They have totally forgotten about this tradition, and they also have uh, forgotten about the peace bell. Uh, so. In the heart, uh, in the in the in the in the rotunda of the United Nations in Vienna, which was basically also Bruno Kreisky's investment, because they pay one shilling or one euro rent, and uh, they are hosted by the by the Austrian state. You know, that was he said, we have to make an effort to strengthen our position as the meeting ground of the world. Mm -hmm. So, I was uh, I was. For many years, I was in the position to try and to keep uh, up the the tradition that John McConnell started to create a, a day or a moment of of like a global coherence and global understanding when the sun crosses the celestial equator, and this is the very beginning of spring, and so or, in this or fall, you know. But the point being, it's it's the one. There's two days in the calendar where everybody in the world. Uh, can say that they're of equal length, day and night. Is yes. that right? That's that's uh, well that's, ge geologically, like you know, if you were if you were an alien and you looked at the planet, you yeah. would say that those are the two days that are the same for everybody. Right. right. Whereas you know, in winter and in summer, you know, w either you're on different sides of the hemisphere, or uh, or uh, the the day the length of the days is longer or shorter or whatever, but but on these two days it's the same for everybody, I think. Okay, yeah. So that's an Earth flag. That's an Earth flag mirror again. No. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's the Earth flag that uh, one of those that John uh, gave me. Oh, the Earth flag. I see. Right behind. Yeah. 
And 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 uh, this uh, is the flag of Ujupis. Ujupis, the Ujupis. Republic of Ujupis, situated in the Republic of Lithuania. <laughs> Very the good. Of, uh, Vilnius. Yeah. So uh, so uh, what I, I want just to conclude with this because this was our aspiration, our symbol uh, that uh, we would uh, we would uh, a small community of, of people and and and. Uh, unfortunately, we don't do that anymore because the United Nations forgot this whole tradition. You know, it was it was proclaimed by Utant in 1971 as a global holiday, mm. and now nobody knows about Earth Day, and 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 everybody. Well, and, and the U.S. has a different Earth Day, and such. Yeah, they, they, like, Gaynard Nelson and the people they moved it to the to the out of the spring break. You know, so we can't mobilize students for the global teach-in and uh, mm -hmm. manifestations, environmental fight because of this uh, spring break. But Earth Day is like a, it's like a sacred time, you know, and, 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 and John McConnell did not just address environmental issues. He said, there is an, there is an undissolvable connection between peace, justice, and care for the earth. You cannot do one thing without the other. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why they probably forgot about it. So um, have we, I mean, this was fascinating conversation to kind of see the whole picture. I mean, it happened in a very natural, organic way. Um, going through that list uh, that you had, would you like to do that in a future time? or is, Or do you think we've basically said the most of it all? We said the most of it all, we do some addenda, but I think it is, for me, it's even important to publish this video right away. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, I think uh, the other two parts, I will look for pictures. Right. This conversation, I think it is. It and then some... how would you summarize the theme? Like, you know, if I were to title it or, you know, what, what did we talk about? Uh, A globe of villages. A globe of villages. Okay. That was uh, uh, by uh, by who was that uh, the the director of of the film uh, Kuyanis Katsi. Um, he I met him once and he he gave me this uh, mantra. Jeffrey Reggio, I met him at uh, Prince Alfred von Liechtenstein's office in Vienna, and he 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 listened to my story and he. He, he said, I will give you a mantra. From the global village to a globe of villages. Okay. So, okay, a globe of villages. And that's the Franz Narada mantra, right? So we say that together. That is our prayer, a globe of villages. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. Please uh, go to mathforwisdom.com or simply read the description to this video to learn how you can join our Math for Wisdom discussion group and our study groups. Thank you for liking this video, for subscribing to this YouTube channel, and for supporting Math for Wisdom through Patreon. What do you get from the conversations we have together? Oh, so, you know, you've been always, always very encouraging of me uh, exploring many novel ideas, you know. So, you know, I've already, I get that from you. You know, you're sort of my, in a way over the years, been my, bit of my conscience, uh, you know, like, uh, that compels me to, compels me to keep working. Um, and then the other aspect, I mean, I, I think there's other aspects, like, you're also very open to, you know, kind of novel ideas, so, you know, even if it's kind of some harebrained thing, like I, I think of time editing or his, history editing or something, which is really non, non-physical, uh, at, at least at this point, you know, you're, you're at least open to that conversation.